Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is February 9th, 2018. We have a uh, good show for you this week. we got some new kit announcements from Hasegawa, some teasers from BMAX on upcoming kits, as well as, of course, this week's kit releases. Uh, up front, I wanted to say a few things. Uh, nothing bad, I guess, but I recorded this video once already, when it was actually Friday. It's now, obviously, the beginning of the next week. And uh, listening back to it, I wasn't like particularly thrilled with the tangent that I went on in the middle of it, just relating to just sort of people's online behavior, and which didn't necessarily reflect on any particular people. It was more just a, a general view of things uh, as, as people were posting. And then, of course, it always has to come back around to actually involve me. And the post was made on a forum, and I won't dignify the forum or the person who made the post, but they were quoting something I had said four months ago in regards to uh, kit reissue prices and why it is that, uh, you know, certain manufacturers of Asian extraction can manage to keep their kit release prices at what would be considered to be a uh, reasonable and correct level and why the releases of reissues from Ravel and Round 2 uh, specifically are basically the cost of a new model kit and why that was and uh, I had made the post four months ago back in October and all of a sudden yesterday this person quoted me and then proceeded to be belligerent about you know pretending to have some sort of understanding of not only how the model business works but just business in general because it's clearly if you put this person in charge of a lemonade stand it would go out of business and so I'm going to just sort of verbalize for everybody the, the example that I used in replying to this person who basically said that the reason why uh, round two's kit releases are so expensive is because of the fact that they had to buy all of the tooling uh, you know when they bought the basically bought it from uh, Tomica because at that point Tomica had already bought AMT and MPC from racing champions uh, the you know this person didn't understand why I say that tooling it, tooling didn't cost anything, and why they, why people say the tooling is paid for, and, and it's very simple. And I'll give you the il illustration of this in, in as fast as I can get it out of the way, because I just want to sort of illustrate the f basically the main point you should take away here. If you want to just skip ahead, is if you don't know what you're talking about, just keep your mouth shut and 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 just be you know happy. There's no reason to be confrontational, prove that you have no idea what you're talking about, and then make a general fool out of yourself in public about something you clearly know nothing about. Okay, so the example I gave was, you know, the fact that most Japanese manufacturers, when they reissue model kits, tend to reissue model kits at a price point that is either lower than or at what would be considered to be the inflation rate price. So the example was, uh, because this just was reissued last month. The BMW 635 Fujimi Enthusiast Series kit just got reissued last month, probably two weeks ago. The MSRP on that kit in Japan is 3,200 yen, which is equivalent to $32. It's on sale at Hobby Link Japan for 25. It's on sale at Hobby Search for like 27. It's always a $2 discrepancy between those two places. Hobby Link's just bigger and can, you know, buy more in volume and, and you you get the savings passed on to you. Um, but, you know, the, the price would be $32 if you just bought it at a Japanese hobby shop that sold at MSRP. Basically the Japanese equivalent of Hobby Lobby, right? When that kit was last reissued, was reissued in 2007. That price was also 3,200 yen at that time. So over the course of that 12, 11 year period, the price did not increase. That's like one thing. When that kit was originally issued, it was originally issued in 1986. I believe it also had an, or another reissue in the early 2000s on top of that, but that was the most recent one was 2007. In 1986, the kit has an end cap price of 1,500 yen, which is the equivalent of about 13 and a half dollars, based on what the exchange rate was in 1986. Um, there was a whole thing called the Plaza Accord that basically the world decided the, val the dollar the value of the dollar was too expensive, and that effectively revalued the yen and made the kit worth go from being basically worth about five dollars to being worth something close to what we consider to be the exchange rate in 2018, which is 
105 yen to a dollar. At the time, it was 135 yen, so, you know, you're getting an extra 30 yen to a dollar kind of thing there, and it ends up being like 13 bucks. Well, if you go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they have a fun little uh, interactive thing called the Consumer Price Index, which allows you to enter a price at any month and year going back into the 1920s and bring it to the present day. So if you take that $14 model kit for all intents and purposes in 1986 money and put it into 2018 money, guess what? It costs $32. So effectively, while the price overall price itself has increased from $15 to $30, or $32, we'll be specific about it, the actual value is exactly the same. That kit would cost $32 in today's money, and it costs $32 in today's money. Now we go and look at the example of the 57 Chevy Pepper Shaker. This is the recent 3-in-1 old 1960s AMT tooling that was just reissued a couple months ago. That kit was was done up and tooled up in the 1960s. I picked 1967 as a date. I believe the cooling is actually from 65 or 64. In 1967, that kit cost $1.99. It was what the, what the MSRP was on it. You may have only paid a dollar because, of course, nobody pays MSRP. That's the suggested retail price, but most places don't price that high. But the MSRP was just two bucks, right? Well, if you take 1967 two dollars and turn it into 2018, it's fourteen dollars. The reissue several weeks ago, or a couple months ago, uh, was thirty-one dollars and ninety-five cents. Is what the MSRP is for that. So my question to this person was. What exactly explains that giant discrepancy? You are trying to tell me that because Round 2 bought this tooling off of t off of Tomica, which bought it off Racing Champions, which bought it off of AMT Erdo, which bought it off of Lesney, which bought it off of the original AMT in Troy, Michigan, 50 years ago, that, that, that justifies a 100% over inflation price for that kit. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. Now, granted, Round 2 doesn't do any new automotive kits other than the Camaros and, of course, the showroom replica kits they did at the end of the, the early 2000s, or the early 2010s, I guess I should say. Um, their shtick is reissuing old stuff. And I realize by charging what they charge, it allows them to go back and fix tooling and, and everything. I'm not really belating, ber, uh, belaboring the point of what they charge necessarily other than the fact that it's too much in the whole general concept like there were a few kits that that Ravel reissued in and around about seven years ago maybe maybe a little shorter than that probably about five years ago that they were reissuing uh monogram kits under the monogram label and some Ravel kits under the Ravel label and there was a, it was sort of like they tried to create a price uh level where the, some of the older kits were a little less and a great example of that is I have and many of you probably do too the the uh, 1970 Roadrunner reissue that was done in a monogram box. Uh, it's an old, you know, it's an old monogram kit from the 1980s, and uh, it was reissued 2012, 2013, something like that. And I paid $14 for it at NNL East that year. I guarantee you, if Ravel reissued that kit again, they would charge you twenty dollars for it, like they, with like, like they, well, more than twenty, twenty-three dollars for it, like they, like they do with everything they reissue anymore. And so I've, 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 you know, the thing you have to consider when you're like, well, it's 2018 and, and, and you don't understand the cost. Look, the cost of everything constantly creep. I understand that. But when you order 6,000 boxes that are all the same thing, guess what? The boxes cost about a buck or two a box. When you order 6,000 sheets of decals that are exactly the same thing, guess what? It costs a buck or two per decal sheet at that point. When because I've I've priced custom decals on a large scale run before, and that no, no I'm not talking I'm talking 500 sheets, not 6,000 sheets, and the cost of the decal sheets is like five or six dollars a piece at 500 run. 6,000, believe me, it's a buck or two at that point. Round two doesn't even draw new instructions; they're reissuing the old instructions from the 1960s, which annoys me to no end. But that's their shtick, so so be it. So you have the new box art, which more often than not is replicating old box art. So your graphic designer isn't exactly going out on a huge limb here; they're just recreating something that already exists. Oh, well, the cost of oil is skyrocketing. Well, the cost of oil is down eight percent today over what it was at the beginning of the year. 
I don't see anyone knocking eight percent off my model kit prices. It's it's not attached. I can sell you a full tractor trailer, forty five thousand five hundred pounds of plastic styron pellets that you can make model kits out of for about forty thousand dollars delivered to your front door. That's what it costs. So there's about ten cents of plastic in every model kit, give or take. Basically, all told, including licensing fees, because there was another whole licensing. It's so expensive. Right, but you're prorating it out over a, a, a large number of, of units. Again, dollars per model kit. And trust me, I guarantee you that the licensing for BMW in 2018 is a great deal more expensive than the licensing for Chevrolet in 2018. Especially when you're like talking about licensing a product that is, you know, a 1957 Chevy and not a current Camaro or something like that. You're talking about these kits, reissue kits cost like maybe less than ten dollars. Period, less than ten dollars. Really, it could be anywhere from like five to five to ten dollars, depending on what the exact licensing fee is for what manufacturer, how complicated the kit is in terms of, of parts, if there was any cleanup needed to be done to the molds. We're not talking about making anything new to the molds. I mean, just straight reissues. Uh, you know, you got to pay the graphic artist to do the new decal sheets, but and stuff like that. Five to ten dollars is what it costs to reissue a model kit per unit, and they're charging you thirty-one dollars and ninety-five cents per unit. Somebody's making a lot of money there. Now, granted, probably only a half of that amount of money is actually made by round two. The rest of it's made by the guy who's the distributor, and then your local hobby shop, and and that middleman markup, and your local hobby shop keeping his lights on, and and all that stuff. And plus, a lot of local hobby shops aren't charging the MSRP either. My my local guy charges maybe 20 spot somewhere between 25 50 and 27 dollars per reissue so i mean you're not paying the 32 dollars strictly i'm just talking about like a shelf price at hobby lobby again is that too much i don't know you know where it's too much to me is where you're talking about some of these reissues where they're reissuing stuff from the 1990s that stuff's not rare it's not old it's not anything special it's it's you know I, you know, again, the point wasn't necessarily to belabor, like, you know, down with round two, they're costing too much. It was just a, an explanation that they are charging too much. If you want to pay it, that's your principle. I mean, they're going to reissue, um, great example, they're going to reissue the 1970 Corvette uh, LT1ZR1, right? That's a kit from the 1990s bin. Uh, I paid $5.00. And I, on a consignment sale for the 72 LT1 convertible. But guess what? I don't have a 70 LT1 ZR1 kit. I'll go pay $27 for one because I want that kit. It fits into a slot of my Corvette collection. But I think round two's, and I've talked about this long, several times before, I think round two's strength is reissuing the stuff that hasn't been seen in a long time. The California Holler, the uh, W925 uh, Kenworth, a lot of these older drag kits that haven't been around for a while that they've had to tool up new bodies for, a lot of these Malays era cars like the Pacers and the Gremlins and the in the Pinto wagon and uh, the Dotson pickup truck and all of these old kits that legitimately have not been reissued since the 1970s and the early 1980s because there is not only a demand for those kits, but the price that they're charging at $31 is less than the resale value for the originals. So in that case, you're getting a discount because it doesn't cost as much. When you start charging me $32 for a 66 Ford Fairlane, there's too many of those around to be charging that much money. That's uh, You're paying for basically a new set of decals and maybe some pad printed tires. Is that worth more than the 10 bucks you can go pick up one on eBay? You see, now we're starting to get into where that I have the issues with it. But, you know, again, the, the general point is don't come and don't come at me with the fact that thirty two dollars is what the kit costs because of the fact that uh, you know oil costs too much and shipping costs too much and licensing is outrageous because you clearly don't know what the price of anything is you just don't because if you did you wouldn't make statements like that and I see people you know, a lot of people were commenting on round two's uh, Facebook page here recently uh, belaboring the fact that they're going to be reissuing the six nine old bill four four two w thirty kit again. Well, the kit hasn't been really reissued in 12 years, so it's been a while. It's a whole generation, basically, or, or you know, decadal generation of people that either never bought one, 
have not had a chance to buy one or don't even know what the kit is because it, it was reissued either at a time where they weren't alive or they weren't in the hobby. Round 2 makes its money. Ravel makes its money. Mobius, to a certain extent, because they don't put their stuff in Hobby Lobby, but Mobius makes their money by having stuff in frontline retail stores. We've talked about this before when we discuss people's objections with reissues. Round 2 doesn't make a nickel off of you selling your Ultimate Bill 442 on eBay for $25. They don't. They only make a nickel if they, somebody goes to Hobby Lobby and pays, you know, what, 18 19 bucks with a 40% off coupon, right? Well, they ought to do this. They ought to do that. And, and, and all of those they oughtas tend to be made by people who don't have the slightest clue what they're talking about. They're asking for kits that can't be reissued because they're annuals and they don't exist anymore. They're asking for kits that don't exist anymore because they were turned into drag cars, turned into short track cars, turned into anything other than the factory stock car that they're asking for. Or, my personal favorite, they asked for a car that doesn't wasn't manufactured by AMT or MPC in the first place. It's a Ravel kit. Just, I, I don't think it's any worse than it ever has been before, because I see that post, well, it's just, every day it's getting worse. I don't think it's any worse than it ever was, but everybody seems to have this overwhelming need, especially on social media platforms. Not so much here on YouTube, because we're, for the most part, most of us put ourselves out here, legitimately. You know what I look like. If you don't like something I say and you haven't been at a model show I'm, I'm at, you're wel welcome to come in t and complain to me in person. I'm not going to punch you. I'm not going to be offended by your position because everybody has the right to their opinion. You just don't have the right to your own set of facts. And with that, I guess we're going to just go ahead and leave it there. Just other than the fact that it just it drives me crazy. It really does. It's, it's this, this hobby is not magical. This hobby is not a, a wonderland of, of mystery. It's not Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Anybody who wants to talk to people can usually find them. Come to NNL East. You can talk to Dave Metzner, the head of product development at Mobius. And you can talk to Ed Sexton, who's the head of product development at Ravel. It's amazing. They'll sit there and chit-chat with you all day. They ain't got nothing else to do, and they ain't going nowhere for nine hours. So they'll talk to you. This is not a giant secret conspiracy of hobby insiders who are out to get you. A little education goes a long way. I know a lot of people, to them, this is just a hobby, and they're plastic toys, and they don't care, and that's your right, but when you don't care, don't don't comment. You're, I understand that you have this want to have a thought out there with your name attached to it, but those thoughts are 99% wrong, and my thought ends up being like, what is this guy talking about? Why is he such an idiot? Don't be an idiot. All right, so anyway, Hasegawa has announced their April slate of reissues, and these are all going to be reissues, but there are a few things in here that are kind of neat. Uh, they're going to reissue their Subaru Impreza Sports Wagon. Now, we talked about this in the uh, a couple of videos ago. That In March, they're going to reissue the four-door version of this Impreza. This is a, like a 1998, uh, I think it is, 97, 98. It's somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s. <clears throat> uh they did two WRXs. One's a sedan, and then one is the sports wagon. This is basically the generation right before the Bug Eye uh, WRX. So that's coming back. Uh, they're going to reissue their Bennington uh, Ford powered B190 F1 car. This is another one of the 124th scale F1 cars. Um, this is a little more of a successful car in the 1 1 uh, division. It did win the last two races of, that, of the season it ran in which I want to say is 92, 93. I looked this up four days ago, and I don't remember what it is anymore. But anyway, compared to the uh, the two Agori Suzuka uh, cars that were reissued and about to be reissued, this is a very very much more successful platform. Uh, normally we don't cover figures and stuff like that, but I just want to mention this because of the fact that they're 124 scale, and you may be looking for it if you're into the 124 scale F1 cars, is the fact that they will be reissuing their F1 driver's uh, figure set, which includes uh, a seated figure for a race driver, as well as one that's just sort of standing, all jaunty uh, Captain Morgan style for your race car uh, diorama. They're going to reissue their Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6. Been a little while since that one's been seen. Uh, they're going to reissue their Volkswagen Beetle kit, which is, uh, I want to say it's a 1967 or something along those lines. It's basically one year newer, or one year older, I should say, than the Tamiya kit is, as far as the model year that it represents. And this is going to have a moon in, uh, moon eyes, rather, tie-in. Uh, 
So it's going to have the moon eyes graphics and the uh, the, but basically for lack of a term, the lack of a better term, the uh, salt disc wheels, the just the solid uh, metal plate wheels that all the moon eye uh, cars have. I don't believe that they've done a moon eyes beetle in the past, so this is going to have probably the wheels from the uh, the type 2 cargo van which they have done as a moon eyes version just reissued it not that long ago actually um, with some new decals involved they're going to reissue their Porsche 962 C kit again this time it's gonna have the shell livery from the uh, world prototype sports car series they're going to reissue the Jaguar XJS TWR sports uh, street car one of the very first questions I had when they started reissuing the uh, the, the <laughs> there we go. Reissuing the uh, race cars of the TWR was, uh, does the street car still exist? And my assumption with that was, yes, it has to because it was reissued in 2002. Uh, so this again, here's something else that hasn't been seen in now almost 16 years since the last reissue. This is the effectively the street version of the Tom Walker Racing, or Tom, what is it? Uh, not Tom Walker. Uh, crap. What's his name? <laughs> I'll I'll look it up in the background while I'm talking here, but you guys know it was it Walkingham. It's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, the uh, anyway, so this is this is a, a modified version of the original XJS12. This one has a basically the body style and the in the ground effects and all that stuff. Uh, that the race car has, except it's a street car. Walking Shaw, not walking. There you go. Tom Walking Shaw racing. So basically, it has like all of the ground effects and and things like that from the race car, except it's uh, attached to a street car. And then they're also going to be reissuing their uh, landmark uh, liveried Toyota Corolla AE101 Japanese Touring Car Championship uh, race vehicle. This is another uh, one that I'm personally happy to see come back because it is one of the other liveries uh, as far as the wheels. The, the a AE101 Corolla suff suffers the same sort of issue that the uh, Civics do where there were several liveries and wheel sets made, but the wheel sets you know, are not all... All of the wheels are not included in every kit, so you had to buy certain liveried versions to get certain sets of wheels. And most, you know, you guys will recognize this from the Civic three doors. If you want the Anki racing wheels, you have to buy certain kits, of which they actually have not reissued any of those yet. Um, with the Civic Ferio four door JTCC cars, the Pia car was on a different set of wheels, the STP car is on a different set of wheels, the BP car is on a different set of wheels, and then there's the Jax car and the Castro car, which they've reissued, which shared a set of wheels. So, you know, as they continue to put out the additional liveries, we're getting those other sets of wheels you need to make other cars. So I'm thrilled to see those. Plus, at that, uh, the TWR and the Corolla uh, will come out and uh, trample quite a bit of kit value. Same thing with the sports wagon, although those weren't quite so outrageous, but those were starting to climb in price as well. Uh, and that covers the kit announcements for the first week of February. We had a couple of kit releases this week, <clears throat> one domestic and, and a few uh, overseas. One thing I do want to cover real quick, like I said in the, in the beginning, are the teaser things we got out of BMAX. So we've seen a part of this first graphic uh, a few weeks ago when we were talking about it, but this is uh, more uh, of the built test shots for the Audi Quattro Sport S1 rally car. Uh, this one appears to be pretty close to being done because you will notice the one thing that is on top of the uh, box of parts there is a clear tree, right? And so the clear runner and uh, more specifically, the polishing of the clear runner, because the clear runner is tooled up like anything else. Uh, that's why when you see some early test shots, occasionally the windshields are foggy because the basically the molds haven't been polished to be out uh, quite so, you know, to be you know translucent. They're just just cut into the shapes they need to be, for lack of a better term. So this is again uh, photos of the built test shot with glass so unless there are some things here that need to be tweaked <coughs> in terms of uh, parts fit uh, detail anything like that then this one looks like it's getting pretty uh, darn near close to being done um, I can't say for sure this will be the next new toolkit that comes out because uh, you know you have your basically your reissue of the m3 
as in rally spec uh, is the next kit that gets released by BMAX. But that's not technically a new new tool kit. That's a modified reissue. There's only basically one or two parts trees that are new in that. This, um, you know, it's the new tool kit. It's going to be curbside. We knew that going in. Uh, so there's no big shock there. There's a great deal more suspension components to this kit because of the fact that it's all-wheel drive. Uh, but, you know, all in all, looks like it's, I don't know, nine-tenths of the way, maybe. Uh, be interesting to see exactly... Uh, how close this is to being done, we'll probably find out at uh, Shizuka com coming in May. Uh, then the other thing we saw a test shot of, and this is the first legit test shots we've seen of this. This is the uh, Porsche 935 Kremer K2. I want to say this is a Group 4 car. I don't think it's necessarily a Group 5. Uh, but this is obviously a uh, European race car. Uh, it is a curbside as well, but that's not too terribly large a surprise due to the fact that... Uh, uh, a significant portion of these style uh, cars are curbside. I mean, the new 911 uh, 2.1 turbo that Tommy did, or Tommy that Fujimi did rather. Uh, you know, that's a curbside. The only basically non-curbside Porsche of this sort of genre, the 934, 935, the the whole sort of uh, 911 turbo uh, lifespan, if you will. That has not been a curbside are the new Revell of Germany 934s that they did uh, last year. So uh, this one again, you're looking at clear parts being installed on this kit uh, that are clear and not uh, you know milky cloudy. So it looks like the clear parts are done and polished uh, as far as that goes. So again, be interesting to see uh, which comes out first because I think that would be the, the quote unquote the race right now will be what comes out first, the Porsche or the Audi. I almost want to say you want to push the Audi out first because that's the oldest thing on the current projects list. <coughs> the Kremer uh, didn't get announced until basically the middle of last year, whereas the Audi was announced towards the beginning of last year, maybe even the, f the late part of uh, 2016. So, again, personally speaking, just to keep everybody from just being complete and total tools on Facebook and other social media platforms, if I could get that Audi out before the, the Porsche, I would. Again, because it's just... <laughs> I found that, uh, and this is no insult to anybody's wife in particular, but anybody who's married knows how this works, uh, you know, your wife tends to find something to complain about and, and pick on until you do it, and then they find the next thing to complain about. So, I mean, when they reissued this uh, this Audi Quattro, the next thing they're going to demand is where's the Lancia Super Delta app, and why hasn't that been reissued or released yet? And I mean, modelers are fickle, and they tend to act like spoiled 12-year-old girls in the first place. So, uh, yeah, no, no big shocker there. So... On to the uh, kit releases. Uh, we have one reissue here stateside, and that is this, the AMT 1965 Lincoln Continental Convertible with the uh, station wagon parts, as it were. This is a straight reissue of the kit. Nothing has been added to this other than the fact that it has new uh, decals for uh, wood trim for the uh, station wagon body. Uh, there is also a tinted window option in this that did not exist in the past pad printed tires um you know it, this this kit itself has been reissued by round two it wasn't that long ago that came out uh with like convertible custom station wagon like you know linear like they, they printed the box in a landscape rather than a portrait uh this is a more retro worry -re 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 deluxe box um, but other than that it's the same kit um new decals so again you have to decide whether or not this kit that is from 1961 actually i think was when the lincoln continental annual tooling got started uh that you know went to 1965 and got parked there if you decide that this tooling that is uh effectively at this point 53 years old is worth 30 dollars to you considering the fact that you can go buy one on ebay pretty much anywhere for about 10 bucks um there are plenty of those those the, that's uh what the uh premier not premier but uh oh there was a of a certain series of AMT kits going to drive me, and other things that drive me crazy because I hate saying the wrong words. Uh, of those that were done, there was that kit, there was the Studebaker was in there, there were several other, they came with like a car show type thing with like little uh, stanchions and trophies and things like that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, misspelled Lincoln. 
always a good time, right? Uh, da -da -da -da. I know there was one for sale. Prestige, that's what it was. Prestige edition. So yeah, I mean, it's been around. The Prestige edition was uh, was like before, or right around the time I started building, as far as the boxings goes. So and that's this one, the Prestige one here is uh, on it happens to be on eBay here. It's uh, twelve dollars and fifty cents. And there's a couple of the older box art uh, reissues with the linear type of. Uh, box art uh, arrangement, if you will, and it is, I just went by, there's one for 20, and there's another one on here, it was like 19, and then I'm looking at the new box art ones, and they're 25, 27, and 26, so that's, this is my point with the whole rant about round two's pricing. <laughs> Every time they reissue the same kit, that is effectively like, ooh, these new decals, really, those new decals are worth $10? I guarantee you worth versus value versus cost. It didn't cost ten dollars per model kit to make those new decals. Just didn't do it. Not gonna not gonna happen for you. <sighs> anyway, uh, that's that's this side of the ocean. Over on the Pacific side of the ocean, we had a couple of reissues from Aoshima. These are strictly uh, restocks uh, as far as what they are, just putting them back into into uh, circulation. And they are the uh, Hakasuka Works Skyline two door from Liberty Walk. This is the what the second or the fourth kit in the series, rather. Um, you know, you've seen it before. We have talked about it. A, a, it seems like a dozen times now. They reissue them every so often, so nothing new there. The other reissue is a restock of the uh, 1987 Nissan Cedric Gloria Twin Cam Gran Turismo Super Veloz uh, reissue. They just did this kit a few months ago, but it sold out, so they are restocking. So. Good on you guys for uh, buying them all out. Uh, Hasegawa has three reissues. This one's actually from last month, but I kept forgetting to... Uh, oh, no. I'm sorry. I've talked about that. This is actually... This was just reissued this week. Uh, Honda Civic Ferio. Again, a restock. Nothing new. Nothing exciting. It's the same kit. Uh, just, it's sold out, so they had to do another run of them. Uh, a new uh, a new reissue, if you will. This kit has not been reissued, as far as I know, ever. It's only it was ever done in 1993 when this car was new, and then it's just stood idly by ever since. And that is a reissue of the Subaru Legacy RS. Uh, this is basically the street car version of the rally car that they did, and they've reissued the rally cars already. Uh, this car does come with left-hand drive. Uh, wipers and dashboard, so you can build a quasi-American version of the car. They didn't exactly offer this specific trim level with this specific options in the United States, but who, how many people are going to know that? And then last but not least for this week is a reissue of the Lancia Delta HF Integral 16 valve. Uh, this is basically, I believe, uh, two model years older and one trim level lower than the uh, Delta HF Integral Evolution that was reissued a few weeks, or a few, I can't really say a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Uh, there's a, some differences in the grill. I believe the body uh, might have a few other, might have a few uh, differences in, in terms of what is uh, engraved on it, or, or you may be just be the same body and you'll have to shave some stuff off to put the lower level trim badging on it. Uh, there's a different set of wheels in it and a few other little p bits and pieces here and there. <coughs> But again, this is a street version of the rally car. The rally cars, again, have been reissued already. So, uh, not a surprise that this came back out, but this is another uh, Hasegawa kit that has not been available uh, at all recently. Uh, the Super Veloz, the, the Super Veloz, the, the Evolution, the Evolution has been available recently within the last 10 years. This one, I think, is older than that. Or at least I can't find a newer version of that than, than like 2000 and six or so. So if you're into Lancias and Street Lancias in particular, uh, this is uh, obviously the car for you. So anyway, guys, I believe that is it. Let me check real quick here. Yep, that's it. So anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys.